Mini noise suppression pedals. I have the ISB Technologies Decimate G and the Fortin Zool Mini. We're gonna see how they stack up against each other and one of their big brothers. I've been using the Decimator G string for years now and I love it. When I made a video about it last year, I had a few comments about trying the Fortin Zool. At the time, I was happy enough with the G string, so I didn't need to replace it. Lately, I've been trying to figure out how to make more space on my pedal board and found out Fortin now has a mini Zool and ISP Technologies has the Decimate G. I figured this could be a good way to make a little bit of space on my pedal board and give me a reason to check out a Zool. So let's see what these pedals are all about. First of all, these pedals should be mini replicas of their big brothers the Decimator G-String and the Fortin Zool. At the very least, I have the Decimator G-String to compare these two. These pedals are in the standard mini format, so they are pretty much the exact same size. They both have a threshold knob, an on-off true bypass switch, input, output, and nine volt input. Both must be powered externally. Both pedals have indicator LEDs. The Decimate G has a small, very bright blue LED to indicate when the pedal is on. The Zool has a larger LED that turns orange when it is closed or suppressing the signal, and green when it is open or letting the signal pass through. The Zool has a key input, which can be used to trigger the noise suppression. More on that later. It also has a side switch to change the threshold range. The Decimate G has a 3.5 millimeter TRS jack. Using the supplied 3.5 millimeter to quarter inch splitter cable, it adds a loop into the pedal. Again, more on that later. When comparing these to my Decimator G-String, a few things stick out. The obvious one is the size. Both mini pedals take up 59% less area than this guy. If you compare them to the full-size Fortin Zool, these still only take up 49% less area. The second thing I love about these pedals is they both have a latching on-off switch. This may not seem like a big deal, but what this means is when you power cycle the pedals, they will revert to the last on off state. If the suppressor was on when you power down either pedal, it will be on when you powered it up. Same goes for off. This is not the case with the Decimator G string. It always reverts to off when you power cycle it. Almost every pedal on my board reverts to the last state except for my Decimator G string and Polytune 2 Mini. So I always have to turn those on and it's really annoying. If I switch to either of these mini noise suppressors, I'll only have to worry about my tuner and who really cares about tuning? Comparing these to their big brothers, the Zool Mini has all the same features, except the threshold range switch on the side of the Mini is located inside the larger Zool. The only feature missing on the Decimate G is the ability to link with another decimator. If you don't need to use more than one, it's absolutely nothing to worry about. Now let's get into connecting these pedals. Most of the time, especially when playing through a high gain amp, the best place for a noise suppressor is in the effects loop of the amp before any effects that have tails, like delays, modulations, or reverbs. This will cut any noise from the input stage of the amp and not cut any of those tails. You can connect each of these pedals a few ways. Both can simply be placed in the signal path connecting to the input and output. I would not recommend this if you have anything between your output of your amp and the input of the suppressor, like a high gain amp, because the suppression detection will be less sensitive. With the Zool Mini, this is where the key input comes into play. All you need to do is break out your guitar signal and connect it here. The pedal will then use your guitar output for suppression detection, which is ideal. Depending on the gear you have, this may or may not be so easy, but I'll get into that later. If you're thinking you don't need to use the key input, I'll show you some comparisons when I go into the sound tests. Now to the Decimate G. Remember that 3.5 millimeter loop input? It's time to use that. Using the supply 3.5 millimeter TRS to one quarter inch TS splitter cable, we now turn this into a two input, two output pedal like the Decimator G-String. It's a little more confusing to connect, but if you follow the instructions, it's not so bad. Your guitar output goes into the input. The red connector on the splitter goes to whatever is next in your chain, whether it be a pedal, amp, or pedal looper. Once your signal gets to your amp, the effects send on the amp will go to the black connector on the Decimate G, returning the signal to the suppressor. The output of the Decimate G will then go to whatever pedals you'd have in the effects loop, and they would return back to the amp effects. Whew. Got that? If you haven't noticed, this does negate having to split the guitar signal. You can also connect the Decimate G like the Zool Mini if you'd like, but I won't go into that. At this point, I was planning to go into how to set up these compressors, 
but due to a design flaw on one of these pedals, it is now unusable. This would be the Decimate G. I was already concerned before, but when looking at the 3.5 millimeter loop connector, you can see that there is no support on the bottom side. This slit is there for assembly purposes. The problem is, without any support, you can easily bend the jack downwards. Bending it a few degrees seems fine, but if you go too far like I accidentally did, the pedal is done. I cannot get any sound to pass through the pedal, no matter how I connect it. This design is absolutely unacceptable, especially for a $200 plus pedal. They could have designed the slit to accept a backing piece to support the connector. All that being said, I'll continue with the comparison. Fortunately, I did all the sound tests before it broke, so you'll at least be able to see that. Moving on to setting the suppressors. I'll show you how to set up the Decimate G with the Decimator G string because they set up exactly the same. With only one knob, it is easy to set. I'll turn the control knob all the way counterclockwise, turn on my amp, and turn the control knob until the background noise goes away. Let's give it a shot. This is a good starting point. Once you start playing, you may want to adjust it. With the Zool Mini, I'll start the same way, control knob all the way down. We'll also want to set our range threshold switch to the down position. Fortin recommends setting it to the up position if you have a really noisy rig, but that is unlikely. If you remember from earlier, when the orange LED is on, the pedal is closed and when it is green, it is open. Because of this function, you won't need to turn on your amp to do the first setup but of course you can't. I won't just to make it easier for recording. With the control knob all the way down, you can see it's closed. But if I turn my guitar up and barely move my fingers across the string, you can see it opens up. This is probably too sensitive. The best way I've come up with is strumming a chord or note and seeing when the pedal closes. If I turn the control all the way up and strum, you can see and hear that it closes too early. I'll set it somewhere around here. Of course, you can adjust it as you play. Let's go ahead and test these pedals. To do this, I'm going to reamp my guitar signal. This means I'll record the signal into my computer and play it back into the amp for setup. That way we'll have a direct comparison between the suppressors and no suppression. I'll also include some tests with the Zool Mini without using the key input as well as the Decimate G without using the loop. Due to the reduced sensitivity of both pedals, I had to increase their thresholds. Let's go.
In my opinion, I think both pedals do a really good job cutting out noise. And you could probably tell when I didn't use a loop on the Decimate G or the key input on the Zool Mini, they worked okay, but not perfectly due to the low sensitivity. If you wanna take a look at the sound samples yourself, there's a link below to where you can download them. The last little test I'll do is through the clean channel with a sustained chord and sustained note. Ideally, the suppressor won't cut off the chord or note at all, but that might not be the case. Just playing the chords or notes over and over really won't be that interesting. So what I'll do is play them all at the same time and show you the VU meter outputs. That way you can see how long each track lasts before it is cut off. The center is the track with no suppression. The two next to that are the Zool Mini with key input and Decimate G with the loop. And the two on the outsides are the Zool Mini without the key input and the Decimate G without the loop. I've also panned all the tracks to maybe help pick them out. The suppression track is centered. The two next to that one are 50% left and 50% right. And the two on the ends are 100% left and 100% right. Let's see and hear how they sound. It should be pretty obvious how poorly the no key and no loop tracks did. The other two fared pretty well against the no suppression when strumming a chord, but not as well with a single note. This whole test could be moot since you don't necessarily need to run a noise suppressor on a clean channel. But if the suppressor is hardwired into your system, it might be something to worry about. Now, of course, I can't end a comparison without going into some downsides of these two suppressors. With the Zool Mini, the only downside could be the key input if you don't have a way to split your guitar signal. I use a Line 6 G70 wireless, which has an A and B output, as well as a tuner output. I send the A output to the ES8 and the B to the Zool Mini. If I didn't have the G70, I could use a tuner output on my ES8 if I wasn't using it for a tuner. If you don't have a good way to break out your guitar signal, you're stuck buying another piece of gear to do so. On the plus side, it makes cable management to the Zool a bit cleaner. With the Decimate G, I already explained the issue with a lack of support on the 3.5 millimeter connector. Other than that, the pedal is nice and small, but connecting this chunky splitter is an eyesore. Not to mention, it sticks straight out. I absolutely despise straight connectors on my pedal board. You could use a 3.5 millimeter right angle converter. While it does redirect the cable, it doesn't take away from the chunkiness of it. Also, the splitter is very short and is supposed to reach an amp. You could use a 3.5 millimeter cable extension and hope you can reach the input and output of the amp. If you're tying it into the wiring on a pedal board, there's a whole other set of challenges. You'll probably need some one quarter inch couplers and hope you can hide them. My final decision, I'll be keeping the Zool Mini on my pedal board. Not only because I broke the Jessimate G, but the suppression sounds just as good, if not better, and it's a much cleaner setup. One last thing to note is that some people think these noise suppressors are tone suckers. I don't agree with that. Look for a video in the future while I do an in-depth analysis of how much tone these actually suck. That's it. Everything you need to know to decide if either of these mini suppressors are for you. Hopefully this video helped you out. If it did, hit that like button down there below and consider joining my Patreon. If you want to see more videos from me, like the tone sucker video, Make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon so you're notified whenever I release a new video. But hey, until next time, rock on. <laughs> <laughs>